At the FBI crime labs in New York, forensic science is uncovering the kind of genetic information that could be used to target population groups. Identifying individual people from samples of hair or blood has become possible by looking at human DNA. The National FBI database contains over a hundred thousand samples. They use them to analyze particular sequences in the DNA called junk DNA. Variations in these sequences now allow the FBI to distinguish one person from another. The differences that we look for are regions of DNA that may vary in length between people or they may actually vary in sequence between people also. Sometimes these areas of DNA, because they didn't have a known function, were called junk DNA. But I like to think of the expression, one man's trash is another man's treasure. And for the forensic scientists, these regions, because they vary, um, are sources of vast information for us to use in forensics. The forensic work has had an unexpected side effect. The FBI databases uncovered genetic markers to identify African Americans, Hispanic Americans, Caucasians, and Native Americans. Any ethnic group might be identifiable, for two major scientific projects are now uncovering more and more information about our genes and how they make us different. The Human Genome Project is a worldwide collaboration of scientists who are aiming to map uh, where the different genes are within the human chromosomes, what they actually do, what they code for, what they produce as an effect within the body of each of us as individuals. The Human Genetic Diversity Project is trying to collect information on the similarities and differences in different ethnic groups. They are therefore producing information about the different spread of normal genes in different populations. Scientists collaborating in the Genetic Diversity Project have already identified a genetic marker present in the DNA of Palestinians but not in the DNA of Israelis. One individual genetic marker wouldn't accurately identify an ethnic group, but a combination could. If you add together a number of different markers for different populations, you can start to become relatively specific. So, for example, um, the way in which we handle milk lactose is different between the Asian and European populations. If you then add in blood groups, ABO blood groups, very different distributions, if you also add in height, skin color, and so on, you start to be able to become specific to your target population. Once all these genetic markers have been identified, a virus could be designed to look for them on entering the body. It would scan the DNA of cells, looking for the markers. If it finds them, it inserts itself into the host DNA and starts the process of infection. In this way, the virus would be targeted to attack only people who had the right genetic markers. Genetic targeting techniques are already being developed. They are coming from work with a very different aim the search for a cure for cancer. In Texas, doctors have developed a way of targeting a poison to attack cancer cells. They're adapting a toxin that in the past has been used as a biological weapon. Well, ricin is a natural toxin produced by the castor bean plant, which you can see here behind me. Uh, it's an ornamental plant used in, in many people's homes for decoration, and it has been used for many, many years in espionage, 
Uh, it's been used in all sorts of criminal activities where people wish to eliminate somebody. Um, and the reason it's so effective is because it, it takes virtually less than you can see in the palm of your hand to kill an individual. Ricin could potentially help all cancer patients. It could potentially help patients with a whole variety of other diseases where you know what the target cell for the disease is. Dr. Viteta has managed to target the ricin poison to attack only the cancerous cells in the body, leaving healthy ones untouched. It does this by recognizing genetic markers. The ricin is attached to an antibody which looks for receptors on the cell surface. Because of a genetic mutation, cancer cells have different receptors from normal ones. The antibody recognizes them and attaches. Only then is the ricin activated to kill the cell. Successful genetic targeting is one of the golden prizes of medicine today. Millions of dollars are being invested in it, in the hope of finding an answer to some of our biggest killer diseases. But it is the very technology that would be needed to identify and kill specific groups of people. The work that's been done in the pharmaceutical companies in particular, looking for genetically targeted and genetically specific drugs, pharmaceutical agents uh, to treat diseases, uh, is of course the closest example of actually using and targeting that genetic knowledge into specific human beings. The British Medical Association believe that in the next 10 years, a lethal germ might be created that could select its victims by genetic characteristics. A biological agent that could successfully wipe out entire groups in society. The world's first ethnic weapon. An organism that could target specific people would mark the coming of age of biological weapons. For the first time, there would be no risk of infection to the aggressor. More useful than a nuclear bomb, it would leave land, buildings, and your own troops untouched. And as the proliferation of nuclear technology has shown, once the knowledge is available, it is almost impossible to contain. <laughs>